It's fine. I'm in the room. I'm in the zone. I'm back. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm cognizant. Of everything. Oh, get out of here. Um, so we got our little skelly boy. I'm assuming our post-process material is processing because it's not showing up. Again, I'm going to scream. We've got the climbing animation. Love that. Love that, by the way. We got the mantling animation. We got the demantling animation. Oh, yeah. We got some particle effect. We got some nuclear grass. Still nuclear, apparently. Um, there's no, there's no solution to nuclear, apparently. I mean, look at it. You ever stood on grass? You ever seen someone underlit? By grass. Let me tell you, friends. Grass may look green, but it, it reflects. It, it reflects also red and blue light a little bit. If you look at it, it'll have a little sheen, like a waxy surface and a streak of white highlighting. And if you are stood on grass and you're being underlit by the grass, it'll be, it will be, it'll be slightly green. It'll be slightly green, but it will not be this green. Sadly, changing the amount of uh, illumination from the GI in preview version 2 in the editor breaks GI entirely, completely. In fact, GI doesn't really work that well anyway. Not in this situation. I think it's because of the way I've constructed the world. It works great on these walls, but it does not work great on this wall. And I think that's specifically because this wall is only one unit thick. If we come over here as well, and we look, that no, works, works perfectly fine there. So I don't know. You tell me. I think this is just eye adaption. No, it doesn't work there either. Because look, you got this here, which is obviously being cold, and then it's like, oh, well, there's obviously nothing there then. Very angry about this. Very angry about this, yes. It's on my to-do list to find out how to fix it. Absolutely. Uh, but we don't need to be here. Uh, we need to be in the combat, the combat VP. So right now, if we simulate, we th I think we got four combatants here, right? And we have uh, the dummy imp. They have ten times, right? Is the skeleton a combatant as well? He is. Hello. Ah. Ah. Tricky. There isn't a, a manifest of tiles, is there, that we're keeping? It would be helpful to keep a manifest of tiles, really. Um, Oh. 
So, uh, yeah, the reason it'd be uh, nice to keep a manifest in the tiles, not for the player, um, maybe, maybe for the player, uh, but one, uh, it would be uh, easy, easier at least, to uh, affect tiles, I guess. Uh, so if you if you have a, a person, they can reference a tile that they're under, that's fine. And I guess most of the combat is going to be referencing uh, actors rather than actors. You know what I mean, combat actors rather than uh, tile actors. Um, but the enemy placement doesn't have... So the player placement has, has a great reference because it's the player's input that we're going to be using. And players are... I don't want to. I want to give you too much credit, players. But you're you're a little bit smart, right? You're a, you're you've got a, you've got some brains there, right? You can tell when a cursor's red. You can tell when a cursor's green. You can use a cursor. You know, <laughs> this is something that the computer will struggle with. Epic slam. Um. And so the computer is going to have to have a new, a different, a better, a different way of enacting, enacting its, uh, its, uh, its selection, its tile selection for placing uh, its units, right? You, you, you feel me? You understand the words that I'm saying? So the player has a controller, a direct input tool by which to discern uh, tile positions and the validity of placing uh, characters in those locations, right? The computer does not have any way to look at these tiles and go, hmm, maybe I put the skeleton here, right? So we can put an imp here or here or here or whatever. The computer has to know about all these tiles the computer has to have an understanding that some of these tiles cannot have things placed upon them, right? I'm glad. I'm glad we've all we've all come to an agreement about that. So yeah, it'd be great to have a manifest of the tiles. Um, it, it's fine, it's really easy, it's all we need to do is have an array, and when we place a tile, we just add the tile to an array. And we can do that for both, uh, we can do that for just the enemy tiles as well, either way it's fine. Either way, it would be fine. It's the, question I think the real thing is it would be a re-implementation if we did it just for the enemy tiles if we do it for both okay whoa screaming dogs I'm I'm sure she's fine I'm sure she's fine it's probably just another postman it's Christmas time you know you know what happens people get deliveries people make deliveries it's the way it, it's the way it goes. Um, what was I saying? It's a really loud dog. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I think it could it could be even useful maybe to the player to have a manifest of all, all the dogs. Excuse me.
Uh, uh, can't believe it's already 20 to 3. God damn it. I'm so bad at this. I'm sorry. Um, combat BPs. Combat handler and deployment grid and deployment tile and what? I don't know why I opened it. <laughs> I don't think we need this right now. We're going to get the good slam. We're going to get the uh, right. We have a struct. Yeah, of course we do. What are we doing with this stress? We, we have it already. It's kind of stupid though. Why did we do it like this? This is so stupid. Make this into a 2D car array and see what we are. This is just wild, wild stupidity right here. It's really hard to access these. Look, because it's an array of these, you have to make one of these to set each element of this, but you need to break this to set each element of this, but you can't set these elements individually. You can't set an individual element of a tile line in an STRA deployment line. I don't know why it's a deployment line. Oh yeah, because it's, it's an array of, of deployment lines. And we're just using this for each. There's so much better ways to have done this. But I'm using this for each. Well, that's fine then. We have ST array deployment array. And we just, oh God. <laughs> it makes me cry thinking about doing another one of these implementations. This, or one of this, one of this. <laughs> Ah, no, we don't have it. This is just the prototype for the array. This, oh, God's sake, this is so, this is so unbelievably stupid that we have to do it this way. Epic Games, first thing on your list of things to do for Epic, Epic Games land. Unreal Engine 5, we want multiple dimensional arrays in Blueprint, please. Is it hard? I don't think it'd be hard to do. Can I do that? Get off my back, okay? I'm not an Unreal employee, okay? It's just, it's just not my it's not it's not my job to do this. Anyway, so what we have here is actually uh, the tiles is a prototype of the tile actors that we're going to spawn. It doesn't actually hold the actor's information. It holds the actor class types. So it's not actually helpful to us. It's kind of helpful, but it's not really helpful. It doesn't give us a position of the actor, and it doesn't give us a list of the specific actors in the scene that we're using to reference for the gameplay, for example. Uh, which I think is a, a major falling, a major shortfall. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make one more array variable, and this is going to be spawn tiles. We're going to it's going to be an actor object reference array, and it's going to have twenty five elements. Skadoosh. They're all gonna be null. And okay, we have two array indices here. So it's gonna be zero zero, zero one, zero two, zero three, zero four, zero. So it's gonna be zero zero. Hold on. It's time. It's time. It's time to break out paint math again because I can't do this in my head. I'm sorry. But they let you do working. They let you do working in math exams, so it's fine. So we have uh, five by five. So we have zero one two three four. We have uh, zero one two three four. So we need this to be to equal in a series of numbers zero to twenty-four, right? But that's fine, right? Because it's it's uh, index alpha times it's five it's five index alpha plus index beta. There we go. Isn't that perfect? So zero times five is zero plus zero is zero. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 4 is 24. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, math geniusy. Uh, don't ask what a geniusy is. You're too young. No. <laughs> Get. Set array element. Item. Boom, boom. And then the index is going to be this multiplied by five plus this. There's your index. So theoretically now, theoretically, we should have a whole two 25 element arrays. That's what it says. I did not mean to do that. I, I meant to simulate. Oops. Simulate is really helpful, but no absolutely not world world outliner we need the the actors that deal with these uh deployment grid details uh it, i didn't make it i didn't i didn't make it visible <sighs> what is line temp oh yeah it's um it's an internal thing we don't that doesn't need to be that does not need to be. Wow, nothing. No hazards. Deployment grid 2, details. Spawn tiles, 25 array elements. I don't know why this the last one doesn't have a uh, game slash game content slash levels. Oh, it's it's not. That's the beginning of it, right. But they're all DR, DT, VR, Tile, C, right? And they're all these, right? I work, it worked perfectly, right? If we go back to Deployment Grid 2 and we zoom to number 24, 
Should be the other corner. There we go. Bop, bop, dee, bee, bop, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that was. Um, and also, we can use this. We uh, we know the the values of all the indices of the corners. 0, 4, 20, 24. We know uh, the edges are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 4, 9, 14, 19, 24. And the center tile is going to be 10, 11 is going to be number 12. Okay? So we've got, we've got some pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Right. Um, so if we if we start at any at any point here, let's just fill us in. If we start at any point, we should be able to get uh, a couple of rules going on. A couple of rules going on uh, for moving. So not not for moving, but for accessing shapes. Let's let's say accessing shapes on the grid, and it's it's exactly as you thought it was going to be. It's plus one towards the towards the front of the grid. Yeah, it's minus one towards the back of the grid. Uh, it's plus five down the grid, and it's minus five up the grid. So from x this is x minus 5 x plus 5 x minus 1 x plus 1 but there are edge cases that we need to highlight here for example uh, this is this is the edgiest of all the edge cases right if you pick number 24 uh, actually that's not the most edgiest of all the edgiest cases. I think 0 would be the most edgiest of all the edge or meta 20 yeah, no, not 20. 15? 15 is really a shit edge case because 14 is easily solvable. 4? Four? 4 might be it. Let's get rid of that. 4 is the edgiest edge case. No, it's not. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They all they all have 1 which they don't account for. It's fine. 0 actually has 2. Um, so 24, 25... You hop off the bed, have a good stream. Me, thank you, Yodimon, for hanging out. Uh, you have a good sleep. I'll see you later. Thanks for thanks for coming by. What was I saying? Oh yeah. So we can we can minus five. We can go to nineteen. That's fine. We can minus one even. We can go to twenty three. Uh, we cannot plus one because uh, twenty four and in fact twenty nine are undefined. So those are big no nos. That. That will probably work out itself. Um, if we have something like twenty, which is not going to work out itself, uh, we can go. Uh, we can go back fifteen. We can go forward one. Uh, we cannot go forward to twenty-five again because uh, twenty-five is 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 this one. It's undefined. Uh, but we can go back to nineteen. But we can't. So this is this is how our primo edge case. 19 is a valid, uh, is a valid, um, what you call it? 19, 19 is a valid, um, index from the array, but 19 is not a valid position in, uh, in a one step blast radius scenario, if you understand my meaning. We could do this physically. This isn't really something that we need to worry about for, for enemy placement. It's fine. This is for targeting during combat, uh, which is important, I think. 
Um, but it's it's something we can actually do physically. Uh, I've just realized. With great difficulty as well. Because uh, if you were here a few weeks ago, you would have seen me struggling with um, this kind of uh, this kind of tile layout for um, for a tactical turn -based, tactical turn based RPG like this guy, where walking, where movement uh, gives you this gives you the staggered diamond uh, movement pattern circle. You know what I mean? It's actually uh, in incorrect. It's only correct in in grid based movement because you get. Uh, linear positioning but if you actually if you're in non-grid based uh, positioning it's wrong because you get to a point in the middle of the circle where you could uh, move a distance let, let, let me display so in in the traditional tactical turn-based RPG you get a movement thing like that it's made out of squares and it's very important that it's made out of squares okay please never forget that it's made out of squares because you can move either left or right or up or down right you can't move diagonally and that is the crux on which this is inaccurate okay because normal movement uh, would 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 dictate that you'd be able to move in a sphere of radius movement right but you can't and that annoys me sometimes it is a drawback to using a grid uh, for a tactical turn-based rpg game it's unsolved unsolved mystery because you you physically you physically cannot move beyond the 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 hypotenuse thing because something something diagonal movement something something you can't you can't do that anyway uh that's not a topic for this video i'm afraid i don't even remember what i was doing so good um do you remember what i was doing if you remember what i was doing please ring this number ring this hotline now and tell me what the hell was i doing we made an array for each of these right we made an array for each of these so that we could uh, have the AI be able to place enemies and that's fine that's totally that's totally fine so all we need is an AI controller to control the AI what is that noise Very interesting. Very cool. So, what do we need? I think the enemy error, uh, error, error, the enemy error, the enemy error, god damn it. What is the enemy AI gonna do? When is the enemy AI gonna be spawned? Tell me this. Okay, no idea what I'm doing again. Great. It can't be the deployment grid, it can't be the combat handler. Oh, it could be the combat handler. Could it? It couldn't. No, it, I don't think so. I mean, obviously this is what's going to spawn the enemy AI. Ah, don't do this. Do not, do not do this. This is bad. We have add actor to initiative right here. This was just to test it, right? I don't want to keep this in. I don't want to. I don't want to keep this in. All right, and I guess we could put it on a custom event that fires after placement has been done. 
add custom event this is uh, placement completed Uh, which should just be called by something. Uh, AI. Uh, I'm actually going to do it the other way around because um, AI placement is almost certainly going to be complete by the time player placement is complete. It would be uh, ridiculous to consider AI taking longer than the player to place randomly four enemies. That's silly. That is silly. Yes. Ah, uh, interesting. I've just thought of something that is not good. Where are we spawning the... Where are we spawning the... The dude. Where are we spawning the dude from? Better be in the player character. Uh, the player controller. There is no difference between player character and player controller in the notation. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm panicking. I am panicking. This is where we have... Uh... Nope. Nope. Stop. Set input mode game and UI. Fuck always. Stop. Why is that even there? It's not connected to anything. A stub. Yeah, it's here. Tile needs to return one more thing to mouse over begin tile. Occupied. Which means we, we need one more cursor as well. God damn it. And we get occupied by... Nope. It's uh, deployment tile P, right? Deployment tile P? Do these have collision? They have a collider. 
What does the Collider do? Gross Collider mode default. Default, default. Default, 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 default collision. Here we go. Da -da. Overlap all dynamic. That's not good. Query only, no physics. How do I check an overlap only? Um, I just we have a small collide. We have a small the the we have a small collider on top. That's the only thing I can think of. A small non-colliding overlap only collider on top. Maybe. Am I live? Dude, I'm live. Check it out. I didn't know. Oh, oh, that's that's very sneaky. That's very sneaky. Um, oh, deployment tile P is the parent uh, default scenery. This is gonna we're gonna rename this. This is gonna be the uh, base mesh collision. I'm gonna add uh, box collision, and this is gonna be not parented to that. Thank you. This is gonna be uh, this is gonna what's it what's this gonna be, kids? What's this gonna be? What's this gonna be? Tell me. I need to know. It's going to be... What's it going to be called? It's going to be the foot... foot Overlapper. <laughs> foot overlapper. <laughs> uh, the box extents are going to be... 60 in X, 60 in... What? No? The 32, yeah, it's a 64 by 64 cube that we're working with. And its location is going to be 17, 0. 32. I'm confused. These are just default values, right? These are editable in each individual instance of, of the of the dude. And I wonder I wonder if we have a dude that we can uh, open and see if that is in fact correct. Foot overlapper. Yeah, no, it's not it's not it's close. It's close to being correct, but it's not actually correct. It's nowhere near to being. It's nowhere near to being correct, isn't it? I 
Okay, 30, 30, 38. 30, 38, and 64, okay? So that, that's where it needs to be. And... Base mesh collision needs to be 32, 32, 32. Thirty-two. I think that's correct. Yeah, thirty-two, thirty-two, thirty-two. Ah, uh, thirty-two. Oh, thirty-four. It's slightly, slightly bigger, right? Where is the shade? It's slightly bigger, so we have an overlap, right? Oh, sh we could have just used that for the overlap. Uh, okay. Am I an idiot? I don't know. We'll find out next week. Does event begin overlap? This is query only, no physics collision. So that's fine. It ignores everything except visibility. Um, hmm. Let's ignore it. This is just overlap all dynamic. And then uh, we have on component begin overlap. And on component end overlap. Overlap. CBP test combatant, I guess. on end overlap and it's just the the same but backwards
Brank. Spawn actor cursor valid. Core spawn actor. It's going to be. It's not going to be curse of valid though, is it? Oh, hello. We had a no. Ah, oh, transform. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that whole transform shindig. It's fine. It's sorted. And then um, we need to make that cursor. Uh, it's going to be like a yellow color, I guess. Slightly orange yellow. Why can't you preview the rotation in uh, in the editor anymore? What is test combatant? What is test combatant? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's test combatant? Whoa, 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 whoa. CBP test combatant. What are you? Ah, it's deprecated. <laughs> we don't use that anymore. Whoopsie. We use combat actor. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. That. And and combat actor we got a
Right. It's the animation actor. Okay. It's the animation actor that's got the, uh... It's got the gross collider, and this has overlap all dynamic. Yes. Generate overlap events. Yes. I think we're getting there. Friends, is your cup dry? Do you need a refill? Is it the time of day where hydration is at its lowest? Well, I've got good news. Uh, cause, uh, me too. If I just scoot that in there. And we'll just, we'll just pray we get, we'll pray we get a towel that it can stand on, okay? <laughs> Damn it. Oh. <laughs> really? The only tile. Oh, no, that's wrong. Interesting. Interesting. It's touching the floor, right? It's like it's within that box. Did I actually set it? So this is the thing, I don't think I actually said it, did I? Yeah. Nope. <sighs> there we go. Yep. That is the problem with, with doing something. You have to actually do it. And it still doesn't work. Okay. Great. Why? Definitely such a definitely uh, collision is cycle view mode is V. Material null, good, PCR default, 
null by no material. Great. That's good. That's a, that's a good start. Interesting why that why this does not work. Okay, um, nothing we can do about that. What if we take what what if we what if we get a drink before we, we proceed this? What if we get a drink before we proceed with this? Because this is gonna this is gonna be a little bit of a reshuffle of of what we would we we gonna be originally happy with doing. But. Yeah, it's it's drink time. It's drink time. It is absolutely drink time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, friends. I'm gonna go grab a drink. You sit tight unless you need a drink too. That's what we do. So, I'm having a problem. If we do this, and we change this to animation actor. Yeah? This is going to work now, isn't it? Because what we're doing is, we're not, it's obviously not going to work if he's not in position. Uh, this is frustrating. This is for this is frustrating. It should be an overlap event because the, uh, the 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 lad is here, right? Right there, boom. And we can see we have gross collider inherited from animation AA dominion, right? I'm an animation actor. I, that's that's why it's not working. Oops. Yes, no. I don't want to. I want to grab you as an actor. The whole thing. Yeah, whoops. Whoopsie. Yeah, I didn't grab one of the combat actors. I grabbed an animation actor. Of course, it's not going to work. But actually, that was an animation actor, so why didn't that work? Because we're now looking for an animation actor. But we're only looking for an animation actor in the overlap component. The whole thing is not a component. The whole thing is an animation actor. I wonder. Give me the angle, bro. Come on. Move it, move it forward. It shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. It should not matter. Mm, okay. Uh, so no, that's, that is not how that works, apparently. Uh, so other actor. Object, object, animation actor. Say, play, 
and then yeah that that doesn't work and I expected that to doesn't work because these are combat actors they don't inherit from animation actor but they have an animation actor inside which is why other comp get class I don't know that should have worked in my opinion because there is a component of an animation actor inside the combat actor class. <sighs> Let Let it just work, bro. Why it don't work? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the animation actor and we are going to delete the gross collider and then we're going to go to the combat actor and we're going to add a gross collider <laughs> box collision box the box extent is going to be 16 16 32 and the location is going to be incorrect. It's going to be 8816. Now that looks tiny. Are you sure that's correct? And the location is going to be 816. Yeah. That looks small. Yes, it is small. That's, that should be correct, right? So they still have colliders, right? Let's be real about this. Collider. Uh, overlap all dynamic. Query only. It overlaps everything and overlap events are generated. Okay. So that should, should be the end of our conversation with Unreal Engine today. And it's not, apparently. So good deployment tile p well let's try this right so we don't check what it is, just when something overlaps, it, it sets it, okay? And when something unoverlaps, it unsets it. So that doesn't work at all. So there's obviously nothing overlapping here, which is making me wonder. Is the overlap... Good. Does it have to... Does it have... Does it have to be completely overlapped? Did I just don't open the console? I did not mean to. I don't think it does have to be completely overlapped. Uh, let's simulate real quick and then we can get this and then we can see if it's overlapped no we can't <laughs> fuck uh what's wrong with me overlap no interesting and now it's overlapped right okay so if I were to assume control, hello, I like how it doesn't work now. Can I use my controller maybe? Can't even use my goddamn controller, okay. Never mind them, I will not. So it, it works if something comes into overlappage on it, but it does not work when it itself 
is spawned. So is there a way to check? Vent begin play, like overlap. I, don't, I can't believe we have to do that, but okay. There is a manual way to check an overlap. Good. So now if you click play, not play, not simulate, play, not simulate, play, it sh shut the front door. Why doesn't it work, huh? Tell me in plain English why this, why this does not work. I do it wrong. Is it going too fast? This is going to be a hard one. Oh, it was going too fast. Okay. So now we know. It does overlap. It does overlap. It was going too fast. Is 0.2 seconds too much? Maybe. Is 0 seconds, is next frame delay, enough? Next frame de delay is enough, right, okay. So it's the fact that it's being rendered, but the, the instant that it's being rendered, it does not, it does not, it do not. Big slam. So that's good. I don't know why we had to jump through those hoops. I would, I, I would expect event overlap to occur either way if something came into the zone or if something was already in the zone when this thing came into the position that would cause it to overlap. Do you know what I mean? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I don't think it'll be a massive issue for gameplay because realistically the only person who's going to be able to place things fast enough for a cursor to not spawn on something because it's been something placed on it so we wouldn't be able to be told if it was occupied or not would be the AI. Uh, where it's potentially going to have the, um, the, the potential to place things simultaneously or within the same frame. And the same frame of gameplay obviously means that a lot of things in Unreal Engine aren't going to be updated yet. But this it seems that it requires at least one frame 
to instantiate the object and check if there's something overlapping. And second thing, the overlap check is now in the begin play section, which is fine. But it does overlap, and that's that's what we wanted to check. Because if it does overlap now, that means that we have uh, a verifiable way to overlap things, right? So uh, we can we can place an actor down, and it will overlap, and it's good. It's great. It's fantastic. Great, great. So we, we've got a little bit of progress here. Uh, we can move this little lad out here now, I think. That's fine. Come with you. And now, um, actually, we should probably get rid of all of these. Uh, this is an animation actor, so we don't really need to do anything with you. But just as a placeholder to know which side is which, we're gonna, we're gonna keep you in the scene. Did I select something I wasn't meant to select? Yeah, I did. Oops. Let's get rid of them, because they are combat actors, and that's dangerous. Um, right. Uh, we need an AI, right? Combat BP. Dummy classes. I guess. I guess. New folder. Dummy AI. Uh, blueprint AI controller. The base class controls for AI controlled pawns. Controllers are non-physical actors that can be attached to a pawn to control its actions. AI controllers manage the artificial intelligence of the pawns they control in network games. They only exist on the server. Hmm. Do we want it to be an AI? Or do we just want it to be an actor? It could be either. It could be It could be just a regular actor, I think. I don't think the AI has any special talents that are appreciable for our needs here. So it's just going to be an actor. This is going to be uh, combat blueprint enemy spawner, I guess, maybe. Enemy controller. Yeah.
Uh, and I guess it's combat handler, right? Spawn active from class. CVP. Enemy controller. Spawn transform. Split. Uh, location. 256. I don't know. 256 on Z seems good. Seems like a nice place to be. I want to put the AI in like air quotes. I want an air quote emoji inside my code here. Right, deployment grid, boom, event begin play. We're right, we're right here. In fact, yeah. So no, not not that, not that. I mean, yes, that, but also not that. So the combat handler is going to handle everything, right? Um, that custom event. Uh, this is going to be spawn, sp spawn enemy AI. That's what it does. There it is. Boom. Event begin play, we need to spawn. Deployment grid. Yeah. Um, I 
friendly deployment is there. Grab that. Ah, they are rotated. Interesting. Not, not a fun number to see there, buddy. Not, a, not a great number there. Uh, oi. be able to just delete those save uh, throw in we have a combat handler right come on all right yeah there you go boom boom works just as it did except for now the combat handler deals with the spawning of the Deployments, which is um, nice. Custom event. Yeah, okay. Initializer. <laughs> uh, combat scene actors. So anything that needs to be cleared between runs can just be cleared between runs. These are going to be const. Can I make them const? Uh, 
Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I can't make him const. Can I collapse that to a macro? Oh, error. Default value for combat scene access generated from expanding initialized variables invalid array inputs like combat scene must have an input wide wide. And so try connecting a make array node. Oh yeah, okay, make array. Can I just do that now? They're the only arrays, right? And they're all they're all the same. They're just actors. Maybe we should be using array clear instead of setting arrays to nothing. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Clone initiative. I don't know why we have this, but uh, I don't think we use clone initiative, do we? Got the fucking Duke Nukem thing stuck in my head now. That's fine. Uh, so event graph, initializer, initialize variables. That's fine. Initializer, spawn, deployment, spawn enemy AI.
do we need to give it um, its deployment? Where is it? Where is the enemy AI? Gone. Didn't even open it. Uh, variables. Uh, hmm. Deployment is going to be a CVP deployment grid actor object reference. It's going to be exposed on spawn. Which means it needs to be instance editable. Otherwise, it will scream, apparently. Uh, refresh nodes. Like that. And then the deployment is going to be uh, enemy deployment. And then I don't know why these are all just custom events. They could just be macros. Oh, the brain headiness. Uh, convert event to function, collapse the Mac. We can convert an event to a function. That's that's good enough to me, I think. Find oh, that's a macro. I don't think we need that. That's not a thing that happens anymore. You just put the macro in there. I'm an I don't know. You tell me. You tell me what was going on in my brain when I did that. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Convert event function. Spawn enemy AI. That's fine, because a function call and a custom event call are the same thing. Quote unquote, the same thing. They look the same. <laughs> Placement completed. I'm going to leave that for now, because that's prototyping. Spawn deployment. Yeah, again. What do you mean spawn the deployment one? When he's already in use. Where? I don't know what I did there. It's fine. We got it. <sighs> right.
Tell me AI should be open. I opened you. <laughs> God damn it. Right. Event begin play because we're lazy like this. It's gonna have a deployment. So it has uh deploy uh dip dip uh dip, deploy deployables which is gonna be an actor class reference array. And we're going to have I don't know what we're going to have. I was going to have something else that was going to be fun, going to be cool, but now that I think about it, we can just probably just use the pause. It's going to be a an int, right? Uh, deployed worm juice, two chickens dancing on a cow. That's cool. That's pretty cool. I'll, I cannot lie to you, Worm Juice. That is, that is very cool. Deployed tile indices. What am I up to? The same thing I'm always up to. It's not an array of integers. Is it an array of integers? I don't think it needs to be an array. A set? A set of integers. Yes. Um, No, skeleton. Fuck. No. <laughs> I'm just I'm just still working on the combat mechanics. Error. Invalid. Set inputs like deploy tile indices must have an input wide into them. Okay. How about get Clear. So So there's already combat happening, as in I can test combat. No, 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 no. Absolutely, absolutely not. Combat would be dangerous, Worm. Don't, don't you understand? Combat's dangerous. We've got to keep the player safe. <laughs> the, uh, combat doesn't start until deployment has finished, and I'm working on the deployment right now. I'm working actually on the enemy deployment for some strange reason. Um, smart choice, correct. Yes, combat leads to injury. Let's not forget that. An injury leads to uh, shortened life expectancy. Etc. Mm. 
This really is going to annoy me, isn't it? Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Anyway, uh, enough messing around. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. So what do we need to do? Um, I'll also make this an event, because why not? Add custom event. This is going to be spawn loop, and we will need a for each, I can't type apparently, for each loop. For each deployables in the array deployables, uh, we get get uh, um, we should have should be a cheeky. Do we need to cast? Get. Spawn tiles. And we can't just. Yeah, we can do that. Get out of here. Get spawn tiles. Get a copy. Random float. No, int. An integer. No. Random integer range. Zero to twenty three. Pure cast get hazard get uh Overlapped. So, and up. No. That does not need to be an instant or, right? So we have, uh, if it's a hazard, it's one. If it's overlapped, it's one. If it's a hazard and overlapped, it's one. And only when it's not a hazard and not overlapped is this equal to zero, which means it's equal to one. Oh, no. no.
Right, yeah. Uh, current tile and tile index. Uh, you can be an integer, but you cannot be uh, one of those. You could be one of those. And you have to be an actor object reference. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Not, not, not one of those. Not a fancy one. Just a single one. Um, you want to be an integer. Good. Good. Does this need to be a macro? My question. Uh, current tile validity. It's gonna be a boolean. Ah, <sighs> oh. oh. uh, Do I want this to be? A macro. I think I do. I think it being a macro would be the clever thing to do. No. Uh, yeah, we can actually add another or to this, can't we? So or current tile index is get find. Set add clear contains item. So if, we, if we've already deployed to that tile, we obviously can't deploy to that tile again. No brainer, correct? So that's another thing that needs to be false. Ideally, we just want to, we'd, we'd want to get this again. We just, we just want to roll this bit until this is but there's no easy, I don't think there's an easy way to do that. Not in Blueprint, at least. We'd need a while loop. And we've already got a while loop. But I don't want two while loops and a while loop. That's silly. That's, that's silliness that we do not need or appreciate.
Yeah, so I'm going to make this into a macro, and fingers crossed, it should just work like magic. Collapse the macro. This is get random deployment. Get assess. Assess, ass, ass, assess, 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 asses, asses, assess. How the fuck do you spell assess? I think that's right. Assess? Yeah. Asses with an extra S on the end. What the fuck? What's going on here? What the fuck? Sorry. <laughs> I thought I was looking at something completely different here. Hey, buddy. Inputs. You. Execute. And continue. Not continue. Then. There you go. Ten. So if you want your if you want your pins to have no words on them, execute for ins and thens for outs, right? So this is good because we're setting variables here. We're not dealing with any in or out. We set three variables and then we use those variables to assess the situation when that situation is correct. We can progress with the variables that we've selected. Um, I hope you I hope you understand. I hope you understand what's uh, what's going on here. So when the four when the three conditions that will prevent us from spawning a person are unsatisfied, we can then proceed with spawning a person. Uh, spawning a combat actor, correct? So what we do is completed. We um, ah. Uh, I guess I guess we would want to store these actors in a in an in an array, maybe. So this is going to be uh, enemy combatants. It's going to be an actor object array. Spawn actor from class, from class U, we get current tile get, get actor transform, no, get off, get pivot offset. No. Where is it? 
could also instigate attacks. Playable enemies can be found, can be damaged. Auto destroy and finish. Path name, act rotation, act transform. See, we don't want to get the act transform. We want to get the offset when we spawn the dude. So I need, I need once again, I need the player controller. Here it is. Curse of WT Magic. Fuck you. <laughs> Hover tile, get extra transform. Cast a... Uh... Okay. Make transform. Can I really just do this? Can I really just, can I really just curse the WT magic? Ah, this is, this is wrong. This is, this is wrong. Um, yeah. I mean, it's right, but it's, but it's also wrong. Uh, that could be better. Is that even is that even right? Scaled box extent Z times two. But we're already getting the actor location, the actor transform, the actor transform for the world cubes is from the center? Incorrect? Am I am I wrong in, in assuming this? I think I've been mistaken about how my game works, whatever. We'll see how this works, and then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's that's all I can say. Um, spawn deployment. This is combat handler. I have pasted this macro into the wrong place. Whoops. I want enemy control. <laughs> Whoops. It all started ages ago. Yep. It did. Um... So get assess event graph actor transform incorrect. Cursor WT magic. Cursor WT magic, please. Hover tile. WT cursor. Spawn transform. Ah! Give it. Give it. Give it. Ah, <sighs> we got to make it at adventure. All right, we do. Uh, we do. Get. Add. Add one of those to one of those. Get. Add. No. <laughs> Add. <laughs> Why would you have two functions with the same name? Add the in do. No. Not that one. Current tile index. Yeah. That one.
So this should spawn us four skeletons, random tiles, random valid tiles, sorry, uh, the other side of the uh, combat there. So uh, we can we can check that out. And you can see beautifully four skeletons have been spawned. Uh, fuck you, Unreal. Why are you, uh, why are you doing this to me, buddy? Huh? Is it because... We don't ever call this. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a critical failure right there. Imagine writing a function that you never call. Interesting. Um, very interesting. So we can we can see some we can see some problems here. <laughs> For one, it's nice it's nice uh, that he's spawned on top of the um, he's spawned on top of the cover, which is illegal, and they have all spawned facing the wrong direction. So. Um, there, there he is. Okay, granted, he is 180 degrees rotated from the player model that I dragged into the scene. So that's maybe something. Maybe, maybe the combat actors need to be rotated in a certain dire direction. But he has spawned on a hazard, which is illegal, and I want to know why. And it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's mind, it's mind boggling to know, to understand why. Because if the tile that has been selected is a hazard, it should then pick a new tile. Which is not what has happened here. Variable hazard. See the deployment tile target overlapped. Deployed tile indices contains. That's simple, simple thing right there. If it's a hazard, it's one. It will go back into the loop, right? Because loops loop until they're false, and when they're false, it can spawn one. That's the backwards logic, maybe. Backwards logic. But that's how it has to work. Uh, maybe we should uh, rename this actor. Actor WT Magic. Uh, So we've got to make a new rotator. It's fine. So let's see if that works. Uh, realistic. Okay. <laughs> I rotated them the wrong way. Good. Plus minus 90. That's just for looks. Okay. Realistically, the rotation is just for looks. They are spawning still on the floor on the floor items, but they are still spawning on hazards, and I don't know why. I would like to know why. And I I wonder if it is in fact the 
that they're not hazards, perhaps. What you want? You will unbind my mouse this instant, Unreal. How dare you? Assimilate. So if we grab, we can just click on it, right? And then we can, uh, it's hazard. It is a hazard right there, boom. So why, why is it like this? Are we not actually getting if it's a hazard? This is this is a question. Are we are we skipping any kind of in instance where we would get if it is? I remember doing it. Enemy controller get assess. We don't need to cast a CBP deployment to LP. Uh, that's that's possibly why. Uh, we just need to act to Object reference is not compatible with CBP tile object reference. Okay, no, we do need that. <laughs> Whoopsie. I think I might know what it is. I think I might know what it is. I mean, this this probably isn't going to change anything. Oh, I don't know. I mean, realistic. Yeah, no, it didn't change anything. Uh, so you have spawned on top of a hazard, friend. I don't know what to tell you. Um. You have done the illegal. So, uh, enemy controller, event graph. Potentially, that could help. That did not help. I hate you. If this was a CBP deployment tile, thank you. Why are you gonna be so big? I don't know. Oh, we got a no-no. This one. Ah, right. Yeah. Whoops. Um. <laughs> Okay, one thing that we need to do is a single reference thing there.
Didn't like that either. Good. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to put a breakpoint in... We don't need that. As fancy as it was cool, put a breakpoint in there. And I guess if we never hit it... Oh, we hit it. Great. So... Current tile validity is equal to true. So we get our inputs. Uh, deployment is the deployment grid, yes. The spawn tiles are all the tiles in the array. And the one that we've gotten, uh, there is none. OK, so uh, step over. So now we're looking at DTVR tile C23, OK. And we the index is 17, OK. And the current validity is y. Hazard is false. Overlapped is false. That is false. And that is false. So that should be false. A Boolean variable is not in scope. Ooh. Ooh, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that completed, didn't it? Mm. Why? Everything was false. There were There were those booleans out of range, though. Oh, wait, no, everything was false. That's fine. It spawned something. It added the thing. It added the thing. Step over, step over, step over, step over. Aha. Uh -huh. Step over. Step over. Apparently, that was fine. Step over. Step over, step over. So now when we return to this, there should be no one stood on these. Why you stood on these? I'm going to throw my... It, it shouldn't. We, 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 uh, we watched it go through. We watched it go through. What does it mean, Boolean out of scope? Uh, convert to an impure cast. Okay. You happy? E are you happy? How about that? How about that, right? So if it if it didn't hit the dude. Value is eight. Number fourteen. Twelve, apparently.
24, 3, Right, that's a problem. Uh, where's the stop button? Yeah, that's a problem. Right. This this is a this is a problem. Is this is getting two random integers? And I thought I I thought I'd quelled that, but that is still an issue apparently. So we actually need to um, only get one. Uh, Set that. We set that based on this get, which is the hell is going on here. This get is based on that. The variable we get one right I think that's I think this is where we were tripping up maybe so we were getting one variable uh, that was then uh, potentially uh, getting a random value each time it was being queried which is wrong so we actually only needed to get one random value and that may have been causing, yes, that may have been causing the problems almost completely, almost certainly complete. It's 5 p.m. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. It's 5 p.m. Do you know what that means, kids? <laughs> that means it's better be fixed. <laughs> what? What? Watch it, laddie. Right, we have a breakpoint here. Step over, step over, step over. 21. Five. I don't know if that's correct or not. 36. What? 33. What? 33. 33. 21. Yeah, can, I want to see the values in this one, Tos. Uh, one, two, it's fine. Ah, step over. True. Step over. Ooh, you, uh, okay, false. Okay, really? Step out, step out. Aha! Right. Um, it does it does appear it does appear that it didn't spawn any um, any lads on top there? It had a problem. It had a problem. It found a boolean that it did not like, and then it sorted itself out. Yeah. So I think that I think that's it. So basically, what we were doing is we were querying a random integer each time. Fingers crossed. That's the problem. Um. So, yeah, get a random int in range. If you drag another pin off it, it will grab a random int every time. So a reason that we set the integer value first is so that the, um, that the value can be uh, saved and then used without being uh, requeried, okay? And that, that my friends is <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the it's the it's the Beatles album. It's out it's Abbey Road, but they're skeletons. God damn. It's so stupid. It's so stupid, but it's so good. Where's the where is the sun in this thing? Oh, there's no shadows because this is a massively emissive texture. Okay. Look at them glow. Oh my god. Stop glowing, lads. Stop it. This isn't your glow up. But 
I think theoretically that's our problem solved. Did not just hit save while we were in game. Uh, so yeah, I will see if the Trello wants to actually load today. Bang out. Good, good. Trello is like the worst fucking app I've ever used on Windows. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? Two-step verification for fucking Trello board, kids. Yes, it's me. Yes, it's me. Why is nothing loading today? Like, the Trello login screen didn't load. The buttons on confirmation of logging into my fucking Trello didn't load. It was just a green box and a, and a red box. I have responded from my phone. What's wrong with you, Trello? This is a copy of a security alert sent to the email that you just sent the security alert to. Google! Like, I appreciate. I appreciate locking, locking stuff down, okay? I... I appreciate locking stuff down. It's a, it's a great thing that's security, but you don't need to forward a security alert to the email that I just got the security alert at. I think that's, at that point, superfluous. Just, just a consideration, okay? Just a, just a consideration. Uh, notes, do not generate in any mesh you want to be transparent. Recursion not allowed in macros. Align front to X positive. No ladder smaller than two world units. Characters must stay stamped to the grid. Do not refactor anything that works 90%. It's dumb. Add a card. Do not requery a get random if you are using the value over multiple variables i.e. an index for an array get and that that my friends uh change cover is going to be red <laughs> that's very important that's going right at the top as well do not require a get random if you're using the value of multiple variables, i.e. an index for an array get. If you are using a get random integer to, to generate a random integer to get something, to get an index of an array, to grab the index of the array, and you are storing the index that you get the first time as a value, and then you are using the get random to generate the index get from the array, you will get another random value from the get random value. I suppose it's simple logic because there's no execute pin on the get random and there's no continue pin on the get random. So it is, um, what do you call it? A pure, a pure function, which means that it will, it will work itself every time it's requested a value, which is good because it means you can use one get random to generate a whole bunch of different random numbers during your code as long as they're all within the same range and you want that but bad because if you use the get random to generate a variable you can't use the same get random node across your pins to use the same value that you got for your variable you have to use the variable 
which is why we were having problems. Now we don't have any problems and it works perfectly. And it's five o'clock. I'm very sorry whoever just came in here now. It's been a, it's been a dev light week, I'm afraid. Um, but on the plus side, uh, I did finish the, um, the the trailer for Stream Pockets. Uh, we can we can see that. I'm just gonna end the the recording though. Um...